In the hours, days, and months following the September 11th terrorist attacks, thousands of first responders and workers took part in the recovery efforts and removal of debris in Lower Manhattan. Many were exposed to harmful chemicals such as benzene, petroleum, asbestos, dioxin, and other toxic substances. Federal officials in Washington and New York downplayed the dangers of working at the site, and according to government documents and whistleblowers, concealed or misrepresented information that could have spared thousands from exposure. In 2010, after mounting pressure, lawmakers passed the Zadroga 9-11 Health and Compensation Act. Cancer was excluded from the list of illnesses at the time. That changed Monday when the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health said some 50 types of cancer would be covered for monitoring and treatment by the program. For more, we're joined by Captain Michael McPhillips. He worked in Lower Manhattan and was later diagnosed with emphysema and other illnesses. Illnesses. He's the director of social services and benefits with the Feel Good Foundation, an advocacy organization that aids workers from 9-11. He joins us today from New York. Welcome to FSRN. Hi, thank you so much for having us today. The World Trade Center Health Program said it will now extend health care and compensation to those who have cancer. How does this change services now available to first responders? Well, um, first of all, anybody who had cancer previously had to go outside to their own private doctors. If they didn't have some sort of medical coverage, they had to either apply for Medicare or other services. Um, And a lot of the people that have had cancer became, you know, financially destitute because of the cost. And now those people can uh, be covered from the same program, the World Trade uh, Center Health Program. Correct. Uh, they can seek treatment at the, uh, the 9-11 health spots. Hopefully they'll get better care. And the CDC lists the cancers that are covered. They include uh, kidney, ovary, breast, liver, esophagus, and others. Uh, what what category or what, what types are included? All the absorption cancers. There's 50 different types of uh, absorption cancers. Now, a 2011 study published in the British medical journal, The Lancet, found that firefighters uh, who were exposed to these toxins after 9-11 were about 20% more likely to develop cancer. Uh, One of the difficulties with cancer is providing medical evidence of a causal link. Talk about some of the first responders your organization has worked with who have been diagnosed with cancer. Oh, my God, it's not only firefighters and... um and policemen, it's, it's also all the uh, construction workers. And the firefighting, uh, fire department really has the best uh, way to judge it because they test everybody's lungs prior to and um, during their entire history in the fire department. Uh, they go through rigorous uh, medicals every single year. So by the fire department doing that, they've been able to track the increase in answers. Talk about your own case. How did you find out that you were sick and, and how did you connect with other workers? It was uh, August of 2003. I was uh, extremely lethargic. I've been to about a dozen doctors. I could not find um, anything wrong with me. Uh, I went to a hepatologist uh, who found out that I had end stage liver disease. And uh, I started getting treatment. I had no idea it was 9-11 related. I just thought I got sick. So you were down there the days following 9-11? I was down there on 9-11. Then uh, New York Waterway belonged to OEM, which was the Office of Emergency Management for New York City. And we started taking families down to the site every day um, so they could see where their loved ones and uh, we started doing the uh, troop movement. We had a barge right there at Ground Zero, um, commuters. And then we took over, because the path train was down, we had to take over the ridership for the path. The path Uh, that goes from uh, New York to New Jersey. Correct. Mm -hmm. At that point in the in the days first following the attacks, were, were, was there any uh, concern that uh, there was something dangerous in the air that people could get sick from this? 
No, um, the UK director actually came out and said the air was safe, but uh, we were told that the air was safe and there was nothing to worry about. What's next for your fight on this issue? You mentioned uh, the question of funding and how in order to originally even get the bill passed, you had to cut the funding in half. Uh, And now with this extension, uh, there's a concern about how many resources could be put towards it. What's next? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the next thing will be really to um, start going back down to Washington and ask them to increase the funding. Um, so we really have to go back down to Washington and try to get it increased. Um, we need everybody in the United States and anywhere else to call and and um, and help us because we're we really need it. Captain Michael McPhillips joined us from New York. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you. Um, really appreciate it.